Hello everybody, it's Samantha. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer in March of 2019 when I was 22 years old. And I was in complete remission for about 4 years until I had a reoccurrence at the end of 2023. Um, I am making this video today to explain my experience on abemacyclib. Verzenio is the brand name. So hopefully this helps somebody and also just giving this as an update on myself for the people that care about me specifically. Um, I had to reduce my dose of abemacyclib. I didn't have to. I made this decision and this video is going to be fun because I'm going to get tons of comments probably. I'm not, I'm not sure, but whenever I make a video like this I get comments from people saying that I'm killing myself and that I shouldn't be doing this and I'm being selfish and I shouldn't be reducing my dose and have I tried this and have I tried that um, but yeah so th this should be fun but I just did want to put out this information um, to hopefully help somebody and explain how me reducing my dose has affected me and yeah so when I started Abema Cyclib, I started it in January of 2024 and when I first started it I had tons of diarrhea and it's just something that almost everybody deals with that is on Abema Cyclib. It's just known that it just causes tons of diarrhea and after two months I was starting to feel better. I had like a more normal amount of diarrhea but not really a normal amount of diarrhea because I was still having it many times a week. Um, when I first started I lost like 10 pounds because of all the diarrhea that I was having um, and then it really did calm down a little bit so it took me a while until I decided to reduce my dose. Um, I started out on the 150 milligram dose. I took 150 milligrams in the morning and 150 milligrams at night and um, that's kind of the standard dose that everyone starts on if they're taking a bemocyclib along with um, an aromatase inhibitor, which I am. I'm taking it with an astrazole. I think that it it this was not a decision that um, took me like that. I just decided like immediately. This took a few months until I finally decided to switch my dose. Um, in March, I think it was the first time I brought it up to my oncologist because I was still having diarrhea and I had lost um, some weight. And um, which, like, losing 10 pounds isn't like the biggest deal in the world. It just happened really quickly, and it just was. It just showed how much diarrhea I was really having, and how I wasn't really being healthy with my eating choices. Uh, what was I even saying? Oh yeah, in March was the first time. I brought it up to my oncologist and my oncologist was like, yeah, like we can reduce the dose. And then I was like, no, I don't want to do it yet. I want to wait and see if it gets better. And then again in April, he asked me, do you want to reduce? And I was like, no, I want to keep going and see if it gets better. And then in May, I was kind of back and forth. I was like, I don't know, maybe I should try more on the 150, but I think my husband and my oncologist and I just all thinking about the symptoms that I was having and um, we we just kind of all decided like it's probably a good idea for me to go on to the 150 dose because I really was just having my main problem really was just the diarrhea I was having nausea too I take Zofran like every day to help with the nausea and I definitely notice if I don't take the Zofran the Zofran is help is managing it pretty well but nothing really could help the diarrhea completely. And I think what took me so long to reduce the dose was that I thought that I was doing better than a lot of people. I heard stories from other people and stories from my doctors about how other people react to this medication. And some people like have diarrhea like seven, eight, nine times a day, like every day. And I was not having that. I was having a lot of diarrhea at the beginning, but then after like the two month period, it did calm down and I wasn't having diarrhea that much. So I thought I was doing well. Um, but if I really like sat and looked at it and like looking back on it now, uh, I wasn't really doing that well. Um, 
the Lamotil and Imodium that I was prescribed was working for the diarrhea. Eventually it would work, but the problem was is that it wouldn't work preemptively. Like if I took it early in the day and just kept like taking it, it wouldn't completely stop diarrhea. I always had to have at least like one round of diarrhea in a day, but like I guess probably up to five or six depending on how bad the day was. Um, and so when I would take the Imodium and Lamotil after having the diarrhea, it would usually stop it and it would be done after like the second or third round. And I thought that, that was really good. So most days I was really only having like maybe two or three um, trips to the bathroom with diarrhea. And so I thought that that was really good. And I think it is, and I, I, but I think it really just kind of depends on your situation. And the, the problem for me was that when I would have diarrhea, it would kind of be unpredictable a little bit, and it would be extremely urgent. So it would be super easy to have an accident. And in the beginning, I was kind of still recovering from my back surgery because I had back surgery um, last August because the cancer um, metastasized to my spine and it fractured a vertebrae and so I had to have surgery and so it's taken me a really long time to recover from that and so I was really home a lot of the time when I first started the medication so when I was having piles and piles of diarrhea it was bad but it wasn't horrible because I was home and now that I have to actually go out and like do things um, to be like a normal functioning member of society. Um, I've noticed that it is like really hard to do that and it kind of scares me to leave my house a little bit. Um, which uh, people talk about the fear of leaving their house and I didn't really think that I was afraid of leaving my house but what I would do is that I just wouldn't eat. And so like if I knew that I had to be leaving my house for like, you know, an errand or whatever to go to the grocery store, I would just not eat lunch or, or breakfast. And then I would like only eat dinner. And if you think about it, like that fi that's fine if you only have to leave your house like one day a week or whatever. But if you like are trying to live your life, it's not really sustainable to just not be able to eat like whenever you're trying to leave the house. Um, so that's kind of, what went into my decision is like is this going to be something that I can do for the rest of my life because that's kind of the reality with stage 4 breast cancer is that you're looking for a treatment that you can be on for the rest of your life so you need to come up with something where you can manage those side effects for forever and when you're talking about diarrhea and having lots of diarrhea it doesn't sound like it's that bad because normally when you think about having diarrhea you're like oh I have a stomach bug I'm dealing with diarrhea for a week and then it's over. So if I'm talking about being on this medication for six months, like, of course, I probably wouldn't even need to switch the dose because I'd be like, okay, like, I'm just going to have diarrhea for these six months and then I'll go back to normal. But if I'm thinking like, oh, I want to live for a really long time, I, I don't think I can have this much diarrhea in a day and it's this much unexpected diarrhea where I'm afraid that I'm going to be pooping my pants. And very easy to have an accident and I never had an accident in public but there were a couple times when like I would be trying to get home so that I could get to my bathroom and um, because like I guess where my house is there's like on the highway there's like um, just a portion of the highway where I, I can't pull over and stop at like a gas station or anything and also I had a baby in the back seat that I would like frequently be trying to keep asleep and stuff so I just like um, would have to drive probably 20 minutes like without being able to stop for a bathroom and so um, when I would get home I would be going from the car to the bathroom and I wouldn't make it to the bathroom like that's how urgent it is like when it's urgent it just happens and there's no way to stop it so that's kind of what made me be afraid to leave my house because it's like okay well if I need to have diarrhea and I'm not immediately by a bathroom, then I could just be pooping my pants in public. And that's just not really a fear that I want to deal with every day and like a reality that I want to deal with every day. Um, so yeah, um, it wasn't necessarily that I was having 
nine rounds of diarrhea in a day but it was that fear of when I do have diarrhea it happens like that and if I'm not home at my house by a bathroom then I'm not going to be able to deal with it and I actually like haven't even like gone on a hike I used to hike all the time I have just like not even gone on a hike because the thought of going on a hike and being somewhere where I can't have a bathroom and toilet paper is just like I like just being stuck um, a hike I guess isn't as bad as being in the middle of public where you're surrounded by people but uh, still if that kind of just gives you an idea of the things that I was dealing with and the changes that I had to make in my life to deal with these side effects um, it kind of explains how it's not really sustainable for me to continue that um, it just it's also just unhealthy to to try to not eat for that long and the foods that I was eating that I knew were safe like oh I can eat crackers like that's not gonna make me have diarrhea but then I wasn't eating like fruits and vegetables and stuff like that so it's like my health would just suffer long term if I stayed on this medication so May is when I finally my my Appointment with my oncologist in May because I have monthly ones because I go in and get injections every month. Um, so my appointment in May is when we decided that I was going to go down to the 100 milligram dose. So um, I got my first round of that at the end of May and now I take 100 milligrams in the morning and 100 milligrams at night. And at first I just kind of felt bad about myself because I was just like, why can't I do it? Why can't I be on the dose that's recommended? Why do I have to be a loser and a baby and like not able to handle the, the higher dose? And that's honestly just dumb thinking because like I said, what you're trying to do is just find a medication that is the balance between having a quality and quantity of life and you need to find something where it's working well it's like keeping the cancer away but also you're not like depressed because you're having this life with all these side effects that you have to manage and so that's just kind of dumb to think like that you, I mean I, I still kind of feel, think like that and I'm still kind of like I feel like I'm a loser but it's okay like you're not a loser if you have to decrease your dose and actually a lot of people decrease their dose it's very very common I've heard so many people say that they've decreased 100 milligrams and even the 50 milligrams like if I needed to I could go down another 50 and take 50 in the morning and 50 at night and then I think there's even some people lower than that where they only take like 50 once a day or 100 once a day um, or stuff like that and so um, the other thing about it is that this medication has still shown to be effective at a lower dose and that might be confusing to you because it was very confusing to me I was like why would they recommend the 150 dose if they say that the 100 dose also is effective and the 50 dose also is effective and I think really the explanation for that is just that like the drug is fairly new and so you don't really know we know, but we don't know. I mean, it's not that this drug hasn't been tested and used and shown to be effective because it has, um, but you know, it's only been around for so long. So how do you know really what the right dose is? 150 is what they chose and what they use, but is that like really what is needed? Um, and also when they tested this medication, it was in all the clinical trials and stuff, they tested it with dose reduction. So if they had a person, that couldn't tolerate the 150 milligram dose, they would decrease their dose to 100. And if they had someone that couldn't do handle the 100 dose, they would decrease to 50. And that was all part of the clinical trial. So the whole point was that this drug is meant to be able to be adjusted based on the person. And it showed in those results that, you know, these people still did well with the dose reduction and that the drug was still effective and so why does that like what does that mean I don't know I'm not a doctor or whatever but that that's the reality so I guess like 
if you're worried about going down to a lower dose because you think that it might not work, at least know that, that it has been used in the, the research and that's how they tested it with dose reduction. And when I told my oncologist that I wanted to switch, um, he said, like, makes sense. He didn't even really be like, oh, like, this is unusual um, because so many people go down a dose and he has so many patients that go down a dose. And he told me that most of his patients don't stay on the 150 dose long term. He said that he had one patient that was doing really well with it, but that uh, patient is 300 pounds. So he thought maybe that has to do with it. Like she weighs more, so she 150 milligrams in her body maybe isn't causing as much of an effect on her body as it is on my body. Um, so maybe that has an effect on it. Again, we don't know that specifically hasn't been tested, but um, that's just one another thing that he said, like maybe the 150 dose would work better for larger people, who knows. Um, and yeah, so how am I doing on the dose? That's the question. I think that it has helped a lot. I still have diarrhea but I don't have diarrhea every day anymore, which is actually huge because I was definitely having diarrhea every day. And there are definitely still hard days. Like you can, I still haven't figured out what are the foods that I can eat and I can't eat. I have found that I do bad with eggs and I've found that I do bad with tomatoes. And so I've kind of started cutting those two things out of my diet um, because when I eat those things, I tend to have more problems with my stomach, but um, there's probably other things that I need to learn and figure out. Um, so yes, there are hard days and obviously if I'm like treating myself to something then that I'm going to probably pay for that later too. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there are still hard days where I have a lot of diarrhea but it's it's not like, it's probably like one or two times a week instead of five to six times a week. So I think that um, it has helped a lot and I'm encouraged by the dose reduction and I hope that it continues to go well and hopefully the medication keeps working. My last scan showed that my current treatment was working well, my cancer was stable. Um, I started the new medication at the end of May and my last scans were in mid-June and they were still showing everything was good. Um, so hopefully my next scans um, three months from now still show that everything is good and Yeah, that's that's basically that's basically it um, Basically all I wanted to say I think so Yeah, sorry. I didn't want to edit this video because we've got a lot going on my birthday is tomorrow um, By the time this video is posted my birthday will have already happened I'm turning 28 and yeah we've we've been doing a lot of fun summer things we had a big party for the 4th of July that was really fun and we've gone on a couple trips and we've had family visiting so summer is in full swing here and we're having a great time as a family and I hope that all of you guys are too um, if you guys have any questions please leave them in the comments below and I don't know why I just really feel like I'm forgetting to say something and what is it like I don't know I'm sure I forgot something so yeah if you have any questions leave them in the comments and thanks so much for watching subscribe if you want and yeah that's all bye